Welcome back. So in the last lecture, we derived the binomial distribution uh, for the number of successes in n independent Bernoulli trials. So for example, if I flip n coins, what's the chances that I get k heads? Um, that would be a random variable that uh, satisfies the binomial distribution. So the number of heads in n fair coin flips would be a, a binomial variable. And what I alluded to at the very end of last lecture is that in the limit of large numbers of samples, this binomial distribution converges um, actually pretty quickly to a normal or a Gaussian distribution. So we've all seen a Gaussian distribution, the normal distribution, the bell curve. We've you know, seen this uh, all over the place. And this is a natural limit of a binomial distribution. So what I want to do today is um, write down the binomial distribution, write down the normal distribution, discuss how they're related, and then code up in Python uh, these two distributions and plot them to see how good the agreement is. Okay, and I'll just mention here, um, this is for large n, uh, for large numbers of independent samples, and roughly speaking, n times p times q not too small. And I'm just going to remind you, the binomial distribution uh, is a random variable x where um, the probability of x equaling some number k is equal to n choose k times the probability of success to the power k times the probability of failure to the n minus k. And I should probably remind you um, this random variable x uh, binomial n comma p is the number of successes in n independent Bernoulli trials, where each of these Bernoulli trials has a probability of success p. Um, so, you know, essentially x equals b1 plus b2 plus dot 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 plus bn where BI uh, is Bernoulli with probability P, okay? So this means uh, a coin flip is a Bernoulli random variable. Um, you know, like if I flip one coin, the probability of it being heads is 50%. The probability of it being tails is 50% if it's a fair coin. And so that would be Bernoulli one half, okay? The that would be a single event. And x is binomial if it is the sum of a bunch of Bernoulli independent trials. So if I flip 10 coins, the number of heads in 10 coin flips is a binomial distribution with 10 comma 1 half. Those would be the parameters. n equals 10, p equals 1 half. Similarly, if I roll dice, um, now the chances of getting, let's say, a 6, let's say my Bernoulli random variable is, did I get a 6? That's a success or not. That's a failure. So P would be 1 in 6. There's a 1 in 6 chance of rolling a 6. And then the number of 6s I roll in 20 dice rolls would be binomial 20, 1 sixth. The number of trials, the probability of success. Okay, um, We derived this all last time. And in the limit of large n, this converges to the normal distribution. This converges to um, the normal distribution. X is, we say, distributed as a normal random variable, where the mean is going to be n times p. This is the expected uh, number of successes for large n. It's just the, the chance of getting a success times n. And this is going to have a variance or a standard deviation squared of n times p times q. And remember, we defined here q equals 1 minus p. Probability of success of one of these trials is p. Probability of failure is just 1 minus p. That success didn't happen. Okay. Um, and roughly speaking, this is my, my mean mu. 
and my standard deviation squared, this is sigma squared, or my standard deviation squared, also known as the variance. Okay, and so the probability for large n converges to this normal distribution, and I'm actually going to write out what's the probability of x. So uh, the probability um, of x equaling x, this kind of um, distribution function, p of x equals little x, this is equal to, and I'm just defining this, we haven't seen this before, and we're going to come back to this because it's such an important distribution. This is uh, 1 over square root of 2 pi times sigma, the sigma is outside of the square root here, times e to the minus uh, x minus mu quantity squared divided by 2 sigma squared. Okay, this is the formula for a Gaussian curve for a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. And here you would just plug in uh, n times p for mu and n times p times q for sigma squared, and you would get this uh, normal distribution that is a really, really good approximation to this binomial distribution. So for example, if I flip 100 coins, that's a large n, the exact number of heads is distributed as binomial 100 comma 1 half, but it's very well approximated by a normal distribution um, where these, with these parameters here. Okay, And we're going to, um, in a subsequent lecture, we're going to talk about how do you actually compute things using this normal distribution? How do you compute the probability that the number of heads is between 20 and 50 or less than 70 in 100 coin flips? That's a lot easier to compute using this normal distribution than adding up um, you know, a bunch of things from this binomial distribution. So way easier to compute here. I'm actually going to make a note of that. It's uh, easier to compute. Uh, with the normal distribution. And sometimes we just write curly n of mu comma sigma squared. That's the, the normal distribution. So much easier to compute things down here. Okay, why don't we uh, code this up and just show visually that for large n, this distribution and this distribution look almost identical. And maybe we can play around with, um, you know, as n gets small, as p gets small, things like that, and see what happens. Um, I already coded this up. Um, you can, you know, download this yourself. You can reproduce this. You can write it yourself. It's really quite a simple, um, simple code, and um, and then you can analyze and play around with it. Okay. So let's see. I'm just going to do a couple of basic things. I'm going to import NumPy. Uh, I'm going to need SciPy because uh, the combinatorial functions, the n choose k, that lives inside of SciPy. Uh, so I'm, imp I'm importing SciPy as SP, and I'm also importing this special uh, module because comb uh, n choose k is inside of, uh, of this. And we're going to plot some things, so I'm including uh, matplotlib. Good. Now, I'm just going to cook up some really, really simple examples here, and I've already, again, pre-written this code. So we're going to start with a large n, n equals 100. We're going to start with equal probability, so we're talking about coin flips. Probability of heads is 0.5. Probability of failure, or not heads, is also 0.5. Uh, and I'm going to compute the uh, binomial approximation, the binomial distribution, and then the normal approximation uh, to that binomial distribution. So maybe I'll just put in uh, parentheses here that this is exact and that the normal distribution is our approximation. That's important. And again, pretty easy to, to cook up. In fact, you could just ask GPT to, to make the blocks if you want. Um, to compute the binomial uh, distribution, I'm going for, you know, for all of the possible numbers of heads. So that's 0 to 100. So from uh, k 0 to 100, um, the probability of x equals k is just n choose k. That's this com function here, n choose k times p to the power k times q to the power uh, n minus k. Super simple. And I'm just going to, you know, tack on these probabilities. So I'm going to get a big vector of probabilities here, p, x binomial. Those are my probabilities. And then similarly, I'm going to use this normal approximation. So I'm going to define mu as n times p. 
and I'm going to define sigma as the square root of n times p times q. So sigma squared is npq, so sigma is the square root of that. And then this function here, it looks a little ugly, um, but you can type it out pretty easily. It's just, you know, 1 over sigma times root 2 pi uh, times e to the minus x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Super simple. And we're going to plot these two things and just see how close do they look. Okay. Um, I think I already imported stuff. Now I'm just going to run this code. And pretty remarkably, it's actually really hard to even see a difference here. Um, you can see that these curves are almost perfectly overlapping with each other. If I change my limit a little bit to, um, let's say, you know, negative 40 to 40, sorry, uh, uh, 40 to 60, we'll zoom in a little bit. And maybe you can see a tiny bit of orange peeking out here. So the binomial and normal distributions are almost perfectly overlapping with each other. That's really nice. Um, and that says for large n, like n equals 100, this is a very good approximation of uh, the binomial distribution. Okay, Easier to compute down here, easier to analyze, really, really simple uh, distribution that we, we see a lot. Um, let's play around with some of these parameters and see what happens if n is small or if p is small. So those are kind of cases we might want to look at. Um, let's take n down. We're going to talk a lot about this idea that when you add up independent random variables, in fact, they don't have to be Bernoulli. If you add up independent random variables of almost any distribution, they will eventually converge to a normal distribution. This is one of the big properties in probability called the central limit theorem. And it's kind of profound and unexpected that under very weak conditions, if I add up independent identical random variables, they will uh, converge to a normal distribution. And the rough heuristic, the rough rule of thumb, is that for n about equal to 30, this starts to become a very, very good approximation. So n30 is kind of a large sample size or a large number of independent trials after which their sum starts to really look very, very Gaussian or normal. So let's just try n equals 30. Um, if I plot that here, um, again, the the discretization is coarser. There's only 31 uh, bins in my histogram for the binomial, but the actual values are almost perfectly touching this normal distribution. It's a very, very good approximation. Uh, what if I make it smaller? What if I make it n equals uh, 10 or 5? Okay, so at n equals uh, 10, you can start to see that there's a little difference. It's honestly still surprisingly good, even for n equals 10, a very small n. Um, but you're starting to see some, uh, some discretization effects. So if I flip 10 coins, maybe it's easier to model that as binomial uh, than normal or more accurate. Um, and let's try you know, a real extreme case, n equals 5. So we're going to flip 5 coins here. Um, and now you start to see the real limitations. The normal distribution kind of approximation breaks down for really small n. It's just not a good approximation anymore. But for n, you know, 30 or more, the normal distribution is going to be kind of almost a perfect approximation uh, of this binomial, as long as the probability p is not too small. Okay, so I um, hope I've convinced you of that here. One last thing I want to show you, because um, this is going to come up later, if this probability p or this probability q is really, really small, then this normal approximation also starts to act funky again. So let's, uh, let's go back and just remind ourselves that for n equals 30, we get a very good approximation. But now let's say that my probability is really, really small. Let's say my probability of success is uh, you know, 0 0.02. So only, you know, 2% chance um, of a successful Bernoulli trial. So now, it's a little hard to see. I'll zoom in in a minute, but it's a little hard to see. But you can see that these distributions don't really agree very well anymore. So maybe I'll change my limit so I'm like negative uh, 5 to 5. And what you can see is that... Um, well, so my normal distribution actually should be going from like negative five to five. So why don't I just do that? Good. 
So for small p, remember p is now a small probability, even for large n, my normal distribution weirdly has a bunch of area to the left of zero. And I can't have a negative number of heads or events. I can't have a negative number of successes. So weirdly, for small p, my normal distribution just stops making sense. And in that small p or small q case, we're going to need something called the Poisson distribution. Okay, so this just is kind of a cartoon that if, if P or Q is small enough, you get this weird non-physical behavior that the normal distribution predicts negative successes. That doesn't make any sense. And so we're going to need to replace this with something called a Poisson distribution uh, for those cases. But for all normal, uh, regular kind of probabilities where you have... Um, you know, a large n and a reasonable probability like 0.5 or even 0.35, our normal distribution is going to be a very, very, very good approximation to our uh, binomial distribution. Okay, good. Um, so that was really what I wanted to show you was that the normal distribution is a natural limit of the binomial distribution in the large n limit. It's very, very accurate even for, you know, n equals 10, 20, 30, and it just gets better and better as long as p and q aren't too small or too rare. Um, and this is a really important consequence of something that we're going to come back to called the central limit theorem. This is like one of the highlights of probability is that if you add up under fairly modest uh, conditions, if you have n independent random variables of almost any distribution, they can be uniform, they can themselves be Poisson, geometric, whatever. If I have n independent random variables that are you know, identically distributed and I add them up, their sum is going to start to converge to a normal distribution for relatively small numbers n, you know, 30, 40, 50. Okay, that's the central limit theorem. We're going to use it all the time. It's kind of a generalization of the law of large numbers, and it's super, 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 super important. This is the first and most uh, uh, kind of important and basic example of the central limit theorem. All right, thank you.